All right, Shalom, which means peace. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakaha Kodash. Okay, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. All right, now, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who the world eagerly calls God. Okay, Bahashim simply means in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, in the name, and Yahweh Shai is the true name of the messiah who the world ignorantly, ignorantly calls jesus christ all right and today i'm coming at you through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai to let you so-called blacks latinos and native americans know you are the people that the bible speaks about you are not okay gentiles of another nation okay but you are of the nation of israel your birthright and your heritage is that you are the israelites okay you're not some people that are unrelated to the Bible that are now grafted in. You are the children of the Most High, whom he chose to be his special people, not those people over there in the Holy Land. They are imposters, all right? And today, I want to just go into a very basic lesson on the color of the Messiah and the importance. See, one of the things that has been pushed across the whole world, okay, is the image of who the world calls Jesus Christ, okay? And that image is this image of a white man. Now, many people say it doesn't matter, okay? But one of the things that can awaken you to the fact that you've been lied to about the scriptures is starting with something very basic, like the color of the Lord, okay? Because a lot of people don't believe that the color of the Lord is actually contained in the scriptures. And people downplay it so much that you don't think it's important. But the truth is important, okay? Did not the Messiah say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, okay? So the truth is a part of who he is, okay? That's what the scriptures tell us. And that should be a very plain, uh, basic scripture that everybody knows. I'm going to just get it anyway. John 14 and 6 and it says verbatim, it says Jesus, but his name is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so if there's truth, okay, then there is the Messiah. He is the truth, literally, okay? And primarily the truth is contained in the scripture. So we're going to go, okay, into the lesson. So let's talk about the color of the Lord. Revelation 1. And we'll start at verse 13. It says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Okay, let me, matter of fact, let me, uh, yeah, yeah, one like unto the Son of Man. Now, this is the revelation that was given unto John the Revelator. He heard a voice speaking unto him, and he turned to see who the voice was. Okay. Uh, and in the midst of the seven, Revelation 1 and 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle, meaning he had a chest plate of armor, of golden armor, or a golden girdle, so to speak, around his chest, okay? Girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, okay? Now, it says white like wool. Now, the color was white in color, but the texture was woolly, okay? The texture was woolly, but some people find that hard to believe because, you know, it's hard to, it's hard when you're coming with information that is contrary to what people have believed their whole lives for them to grasp it immediately. So we won't focus on that too much, but his hair was a woolly texture, but let's continue. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now we're going to, even this is a point of controversy and we're going to get into that Lord willing, but let's just move on to this, uh, this next portion here, Revelation 1 and 15, right? Now this is from a so-called Christian website it says understanding Daniel, right? Now the picture they have here is completely false. The picture they have is this of some yellow, golden individual, okay, <laughs> walking around, you know, floating around, looking like a big old piece of gold. He looked like gold member, okay? This is not a depiction of the Messiah. This is this is a false image. This is some, you know, 
Okay, let's just, but let's just read their breakdown because they're right about something in here. Okay, so let's read the second part of the breakdown. It says, as if they burned in a furnace. It says, rather having been burned. Now, if you burn anything, okay, and it doesn't turn into ashes, what characteristic does it have after being burned? Okay. I mean, you can burn something in a pan and you know what you, if you burn toast, okay, let's just get that as basic burned toast. You can burn white bread and what happens after it gets burned, right? Look at it. It turns completely brown and black. You see? So when you read this over here, it says, rather having been burned, that is fired in a furnace. Okay. Textual evidence favors a reading that refers to this phrase, the brass rather than to the feet themselves. But if his feet are like unto brass, as it, that has been burned, that means his feet are dark brown. Okay. And we're going to get a few more scriptures and uh, get a few images too. Okay. So uh, Daniel 10 and 6 says, uh, let's start at Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Okay. All right. So there goes that fine gold again, right? That girdle. Because usually a girdle goes from your chest on down. This says hips. Okay, but then the other definition where it said girt about the paps, the paps go into your chest region. And typically a girdle goes from around your chest down to your around your hip area. You see? It would be like a long chest plate type of thing. His body was like the barrel, meaning he had on a green garment, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. And his arms and feet like in color to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. So this is also talking about the Messiah. If we go back here, okay, and you can see Revelation 1 and uh, 15 again. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Right above that it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So when you go to Daniel and it talks about Okay, and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire. This is referring to the same individual. Okay, also the golden girdle proves that as well. Okay, and I don't want to get too long winded. So I'm going to just uh, go into this word here. It says his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. Okay, now we have to realize something. We are under the rule of our enemies. Okay. Now, just entertain this thought, because I believe fully well that we are the Israelites, okay, according to the scriptures. But just in case you don't believe, okay, <clears throat> entertain me. If you were the enemy, if you were any other nation besides an Israelite, okay, and you found it to be true that the Israelites would rule over the entire planet and would have all other nations in their servitude, if you saw the Israelites in a destroyed state and you knew how to keep them there so that they couldn't rule over you, would you tell them who they were so that they can go back and gain their power? Would you go tell them, hey, you know, you're an Israelite, so, um, you know, you might want to get, get it together so you can put me back in slavery. That would be dumb of you to do that. So you can't expect your enemy to easily allow you to find these things out. OK, your, your enemy's job. OK is to deceive you and to keep you not knowing who you are, okay? So uh, the enemy has put out there these different little tactics to keep you from understanding what this means. So when you see this word polished brass, okay, you think you think that image that I pulled up. Yeah, let's see, uh, let's see if I can get it real quick, okay. You think something like this. Oh, it's polished brass. So it must be shining bright brass, you know. But who, who looks like this? Nobody looks like this, okay? Nobody's this yellow like brass is. So let's get 
the uh the, the word the behind this word so this is this word is a uh kalaw kalaw okay and it's uh it says polished burnished it says burnished and polished right burnished polished Okay, smooth. See, now when you get to the definition, you, the enemy has done a great job of hiding what this really means. Okay, smooth and polished. Okay, now burnished. I had some more information, so we're going to move to this next scripture and then we're going to get exact, we're going to get some more information. So, this is Revelation 2 18, right? It says. And the angel of the church in Thyatira wrote these things, saith, wrote, these things saith the son of the most high, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Okay, so it's still getting into his feet, you know, and the color of his skin. Whatever color your feet are, that's typically what color your skin is, right? Now let's get this phrase, fine brass. It says some metal like gold, if not more precious. Okay, the implied mean of whiteness or brilliancy. And now this is the deception of the enemy. This is the trick. Now let's get it. Burnished copper. Burnished copper. Okay. And even when you go down here, it says burnished brass. Now when you try to look up that word burnished, you get more deception. Here goes the word burnished. In the etym etymology dictionary, it says to polish by friction, okay, to shine, to gleam, to sparkle, to polish, to make bright, and then then it, then it starts saying brown and polish. Wait a minute. Well, how does something bright and brown? I mean, I guess you can have something that's bright and brown, but it just starts not making a lot of sense. Bright and brown, brown and polished and brown and brown and bright and brown, and then. You start getting into the images, okay? So I got a few images. This is a Mary Kay. Something I just looked up burnish, burnish bronze, and and, and, I, and I found a bunch of different colors, right? Burnish bronze blush, new powder cheek color. This has been discontinued, right? I wonder why that happened. So look at this color. This looks like a brown skinned individual. When you look up this burnish brown, you know. And I have more. I have more. Then you read the back, it says burnished bronze. So wait a minute. If we just look up straight up bronze, let's just do a quick search on bronze. Bronze, right? So if you took this and you polished it, you took this bronze stuff and you polished it, okay? This bronze right here. If you just straight up polished it, right? Would you get this color? Let's go back. From this to this. Something's there's there's a disconnect in the truth, but it's all by design. Let's get some more images of burnish. Now let's go into the true true images of burnish, right? This is European round planter, burnished finish, right? Now, when you, if you hover over this, it says burnished bronze. See, now we're getting more and more into like the color uh, of a so-called colored man. Now, you, you ask yourself, you know, because there's this narrative out there. Well, color doesn't matter. You know, you know, Jesus was a spirit, you know, this, that and the other. But the scriptures say he came on, came into the flesh. OK, he came in the flesh. He was a man that existed. First John 4 and 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, even now already is it is it in the world. You see? So if you can't confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, he he had a body, a man's body which has skin, which has a color, the same, he was the same color as some type of man on this planet Earth. You see, he wasn't this yellow thing floating around on that thing that I showed you, okay? And according to the scriptures, he had burnished brown. Now let's get this word burnished. Look at this. This it says, it's a burnished bronze 
outdoor motion sensor lamp. Well, that look a show a whole lot like a dark skin, uh, you know, so-called black man, don't it? Look at that. Let's, let's let's zoom in. I don't see any normal colored brass. It says burnished brass. And one of the definitions over here is burnished brass. So how do you take if you take normal brass and polish it? It ain't going to. I don't care how much you rub that damn brass. It's not going to turn this color. OK, even when you look at that word burnished, look at the word. OK, let's get it again. And this is one of those things where, you know, a bear with me, if you will. You know, this is one of those things that's kind of hard to explain because there's so much deception about it, you know. But look at the look. What's the root word of the word burnished? It burn, burn. OK, burn. Then you get the suffix ish, ish. OK, ish is a suffix. Now, let's, let's look at the word suffix, the word ish by Merriam Webster of relating to or being a characteristic of so if if it's supposed to have a characteristic of burning or related to burning or being burned you see then it would make sense that it came out darker than it started burnished how why can't you just say polished which they do say that you see they do say polished but it's a deception to keep the narrative going that who the world calls Jesus Christ was a so-called white man. If he, they would rather him be anything but a so-called black man. But the truth is, he was a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah. OK, and that the, the so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. OK, so we'll just get a few more pictures, start closing some of this stuff out. Burnished bronze, you see. And then this is burnished steel. Okay, but this is burning. This is the point. Burnished bronze. Burnished bronze. See? All right, there's some more on here too. Burnished bronze planters. So wait a minute. Why is it all these paint, you know, like uh, paint swashes and, and color, color samples that are showing burnished bronze to be the color of a so-called black man. Burnished bronze. Burnished bronze. Some more burnished bronze. Well, I thought it mean polish, right? If it means polish, then why does it look like it's burnt? You see? It goes to show you that there is a deception going on. Okay? There's a deception going on, which is why the people that, that uh, rule the world that are in control of everything. This is why there is this thing where they make fun of people who you would call a conspiracy theorist. They don't want you to believe that there is a agenda out there to keep you asleep. But the scriptures tell us otherwise, okay? We'll just get that real quick through the spirit. Then we'll just go through the pictures and you know try to wrap it up. I don't want it to be too long, okay? Psalms. Oh, slide. Psalms 84. Okay. Actually, I think it's 83. Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Which that word God just goes, just means power. Okay. That's not God's name. That's not the Most High's name. He has a name. His name is Yahweh. Okay. God is a title, which just means power or Allah in the Hebrew. Allah just means power. It's not his name. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So a tumult, okay, is an uproar, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head, meaning they are, have become proud. They have become proud. It's like you puff your chest up and you, and you lift your head up. You know, it's like a, it's like a stance of, of pride. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. It tells you literally, they've taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones because your true heritage has been hidden. You're the only nation of people on the planet Earth that have several different names to identify you, African-American, black, Negroid, so on and so forth. You see? 
Everybody else are just, oh, they're Asian or, or, or oh, they're Chinese. They're this, they're that. It's not their China, you know, it's not these different whole bunch of different names for the same people, except for when it comes to you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let's not let them know that they're Israelites. Let's change their identity to something else. Let's tell them they're, they're, they're uh, natural Gentiles from different nations. Let's tell them they're Negroes. Let's not let them come to the knowledge of being an Israelite. You see, we're going to even change the color of the people in the Bible so that they can't see it and say, what, he was black? They have to hide it. They have taken crafty counsel, meaning very sneaky, very wise counsel against you and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. No, you just niggas. You from that, you are African-American. They have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Conspiracy. They have, what does it mean to consult together and all agree on something? You have, you are conspiring. Okay. Um, spire. Conspire to make secret plans jointly to commit an unlawful or harmful act of events or circumstances seem to be working together to bring about a particular result typically to someone's detriment and it's detrimental to teach you that you're not of the children of Israel because as a part of the curses that will be upon the Israelites you not keeping the law statutes and commandments will separate you from your power and put you in a position to be destroyed and we can go into that in another lesson all right that's for another lesson so let's just continue show you some more images of things that are bur actually burnished and, 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 and made into bronze because there's a certain thing where you work you work the metals by heat treating them see you heat treat metal let's get, get rid of some of this stuff all right heat treating and it usually alters the composition of the metal to make it stronger okay and when a lot of times when you heat treat something it changes the color this is heat treated steel even this has gained some brownness on the outside so when you talk about something being burned in a furnace it becomes very brown okay and i pulled this up too this uh wash basin okay and it says it's uh heat treated bronze heat treated bronze Okay, so let's get that picture, okay? Which I already showed you the Mary Kay, so I'm gonna close that, close this. So this is heat treated bronze. Let me take a look at that. Well, that looks like the skin of a so-called black man as well, doesn't it? You know? In some areas, it's very dark brown. Contrary to the image that they show you as being the Messiah. Burnished bronze. So how can they tell you that burnished means polished when every, when a lot of these, so is this many people wrong about what burnished means? See, burnished bronze wall panels. Look how dark that is. You know, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but this is like a, this is a great deception that's been uh, passed on the whole world. Burnished bronze uh, bunny. Okay. Burnished bronze uh, bath handle. And this is an old picture. You know? This is very damning evidence that had to be hidden. And so they changed the definition of the word burnished to where it looks like it never meant to burn something. But the evidence that still remains shows you otherwise. See? When you get that word burnished, this is what you get. And hopefully the point has been made, man. We'll just start closing this stuff. And then polished bronze. This is this is true polished. This is true polished. Now, I don't know anybody that's this color. This is like gold. And so it can't mean polished. Look at this. Who 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 walking around this color? You'll be looking at them crazy, man. 
wrong with that dude? What's wrong with that lady? Why she got all that gold on her body? Let's close this. And then you get into some more images, okay? These are very funny images I saw, but they're true, you know? Revelation 1 and 15, the feet don't match the face, okay? The feet don't match the face. So when you see, okay, brothers on the street corner with a picture of this guy with horns on him, that's because this is a devilish, okay, uh, image that's been used to put our people into captivity and to kill us, okay? White like wool, okay? Who got white woolly hair? So-called black men. Look at them. White like wool. See? If his hair was like this, his skin looked like this, he's from this region, then who is this? It's an imposter. So this is like one of the first things you learn, okay? One of the first things you learn to take you out of that, to show you that there's there's a lie that's been pushed. And then you should start, if the Lord put the spirit on you, you should start asking your questions. Well, why is this being pushed? Look at this. Fine brass has been burned in the furnace. Look at that, look at that penny. Man, look how dark that is, man. That's more like what the color of the Messiah would have been, man. You see? And there's more, you know. A few more. Damn sure wasn't this. <laughs> Through. Then when you go into the Russian icons, okay, you find two different versions of most images. On some of the images that exist in antiquity, okay, you see images of so-called black men. And then on other ones, you see images of so-called white men. You see? Look at all these. Look at all these images of so-called white men, right? But in actuality, okay, the image of the saints, like, okay, let's look at this one. So you get it right here. Okay. Let's look at that picture. All right. Look at the, you see this picture, right? These are clearly so-called black people. Then you look at this picture. You see how they try to brighten it up and lighten the skin here, here. This one even looks older. Look at it. And then you go over here and you get the updated version. It's been repainted to show a lighter color skin people, you know? And this is just what you face when it comes to it. But, but we the conspiracy theories. Oh, okay. No, there's actually a conspiracy out there to keep you asleep. And if, and if you don't believe it, the Lord, didn't, the Lord didn't give you the spirit to believe it. Okay? It ain't our fault. You better you better pray and hope that the Lord opens your eyes. Okay? But there's some more images, you know? There's some more images. We can read this. Lies about the image of the anointed. Okay? During the Renaissance era around 1453, Leonardo da Vinci was hired by Pope Alexander VI of Rome to paint his son as the image of Jesus Christ, who is Caesar Borgia. See? So this is that that image is false. Look at this. Come on, man. So these people put a thumbs up next to these feet and say this is how his feet look. Who the hell walking around with this color feet? If you can't see that the wool been pulled over your eyes, then stay asleep. But ultimately, it's up to the most high, man. Okay? Hammered copper, which looks like it's been heat treated. Look at that basin, heat treated copper, which means it was burned in the furnace. Then you look at this one. This is tempered metal, tempered bronze, singed bronze, okay? Singed bronze. Let's read that word. Let's get that word singed. And I'm going to close it. 
slightly burnt or scorched. What happens when you put something in the furnace, a fiery furnace, it gets slightly burnt or scorched. Lord willing, this is edifying. You know, hey, the Lord was a so-called black man. The children of Israel are so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans. Okay? And the Lord's coming back to destroy this place. You better repent to your true heritage, okay, that you may be accepted back into the fold. Okay? So, Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash, which is the Holy Spirit, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole holy elect. All right, shalom.